example, if, if we had a nuclear power plant that had an explosion and we wanted to know how much radiation was circulating in the air, they have a special machine that measures that and it's measured in Rankin R. All right, D stands for rad. The rad is the absorbed amount. How much does your body absorb? Okay, you can measure how much did my chest absorb, how much did my leg absorb. If it's once again like a nuclear power plant, how much did the ground absorb? Okay, how much? And the thing is with, with large amounts of dangerous radiation, it'll get absorbed into the ground and stay there for years. Okay, so you can measure that in rads. Rim is your exposure. How much were you exposed to? Okay, it's a little bit different than what you absorb. Remember, when you take x-rays, there's a little badge that you wear that will measure how much you're exposed to. Okay? And you don't want to get exposed to more than five rims per year. If you get exposed to more than that, then you have chances of developing uh, different health problems, cancer, tumors, things like that. Okay, so the rim is what you're exposed to. It's not actually telling you how much you absorb, but at least how much you're around. All right? And then Q stands for the quality factor. Different types of x-rays have a different quality factor. Okay, I always tell it like this. You see three guys that you like. You say one of them's a five, one of them's a eight, one of them's a ten. Okay, or girls. All right. So it's kind of the same thing. The quality factor is a number for the different types of radiation. The higher the number, the stronger that radiation is. Okay, for example, x-ray has a quality factor of 1. There's another type called neutron radiation. Its um, quality factor is 10. That means it's 10 times stronger than x-rays. You definitely would not want to get exposed to neutron rays. Alpha is 20. That means it's 20 times stronger than x-rays. Even though x-ray is pretty strong, this is the type of radiation that could kill you if you get exposed to it. So these three numbers you are going to want to memorize because we're going to start the first math problem here in a minute and you're going to use these one of these three numbers. You have to kind of memorize those three because you'll see them often in math problems. So the first math that we do uh, this week is called uh, measuring the dose equivalent. In other words, you're going to measure the rims, how much radiation the patient is exposed to. It's going to tell you a certain amount of rads of a certain type. Okay, so I'll put an example on the board and then uh, we'll see how you work it. Okay, so we're going to go over the first math formula that we have and it's explained on the bottom of page 7 but you can read that on your own. I'm going to kind of give you a uh, an example of how to do it. What you're doing is you're going to be told that the x-ray worker um, gets absorbed or absorbs a certain amount of a certain type of radiation and you have to convert those numbers into rims. Okay, Remember, as the person taking x-rays, the medical assistant, you always want to know how many rims do you get exposed to because you don't want to go over a certain amount or it increases the chances that you could get sick from radiation. Now in, in reality it rarely happens that someone who takes x-rays gets a disease or cancer because that's their job to take x-rays. Okay, there's so many safety procedures that you follow you don't even hardly get exposed to any radiation even though you might take x-rays all day long. But it's more of a theory that you have to understand and when you take your test to get your license for x-ray, they do have some of these math problems on there. So the example I have up here says a worker is exposed to 50 rads of neutron radiation. What is the dose equivalent? All right, dose equivalent, the, the formula is H is equal to D times Q times N. So you have to look back at those letters that we just wrote down you know, the D stands for rads, 
The H stands for RIMS, that's the dose equivalent. The Q is going to be different for whatever type of radiation. Remember, X-ray, the Q was 1. Let's just write that down. X-ray was 1. Neutron was 10. And alpha was 20. That's, you're going to have to memorize these because you've got to know which one of these to use in here. So the best way to do this without making a mistake is first of all D is rads. So circle the number that's rads and put that under the D. 50 rads. Alright, Q, what type of radiation are we talking about? That's right. Look at the problem. <laughs> it could be x-ray, it could be alpha, but this one says neutron. neutron. Okay, so underline which one it is, neutron, and remember neutron is 10. So for the Q, it's 10. Now, N is just always 1. It's a, it's a constant. N is always going to be 1. So just, just something to memorize and just always put 1 there. Okay? N is never any other number except 1. So what we're doing is we're multiplying the rads times the quality factor times 1. That's going to tell us how many rims. H stands for rims. So 50 times 10 times 1 is 500. 500 rims. And that's your answer. So all you're doing is taking that problem, taking the numbers out, and converting it to rims. Okay, so that's telling us this person was exposed to 500 rims of radiation. That's a, that's a lot probably enough to cook you. So sometimes these numbers are really high. It's just really to see if you know how to, to work the problem. All right, so I'll change it up a little bit, give you another example. All right, so we changed it a little bit. We said that they're exposed to 70 rads of alpha. So for the D, that's the rads, do 70. The Q for alpha is what? 20. 20 times 1. H is RIMS. That's, our, that's what our answer is going to be. H stands for RIMS. I don't know why H stands for RIMS, um, but it does. So it's 1,400 RIMS. Now, you always have to write RIMS as part of your answer. Remember, anytime the question says, what is the dose equivalent? Your answer is always going to be in rims. So make sure you don't put something like rads. Because if you put rads instead of rims, even though you have the number right, you miss the whole problem. It's like if I tell you to measure something in inches and you come back and tell me an answer in feet. That's not what I asked for. Okay? So you got to make sure you put rims as your answer. Okay, um, there's three numbers that you ought to know about for the x-ray machine. When you go to take an x-ray, you're going to have to punch in some different numbers into the machine. It's sort of like programming the machine. And the three numbers are written up here, the MA, the KVP, and the time. All right, the MA, that's just an abbreviation for milliamps. This measures the amount of radiation that you're producing. Okay? In other words, the higher the MA, the more radiation you're producing for that particular x-ray. Usually the, the settings for MA on the x-ray machine are 50, 100, 150, 200, and 300. So you have about five choices. You can turn the dial up to 50, 100, 2 or 300 or 150. 